Hey guys, what's up? I wanted to talk real quick about intermittent fasting versus the typical, um, you know, average American man's uh, diet structure or meal plan structure, whatever you want to call it, and really kind of um, break this down for you so that you have a better understanding. So, you know, the the issue is, and, and one of the most common patterns with, you know, your your average man who's overweight or obese who's struggling with weight loss is this. And I used to be this guy, like there was a time where I was up to 232 pounds and I'm only 5'10". So that's a lot of weight for me to be carrying around. I now weigh 172. So huge difference, right? I'm in the best shape of my life. I'll be 40 years old this year for those of you who don't know my story. So I was very out of, out of shape, uh, very overweight. And you know, basically I, w I fell into the pitfall that many Americans fall into. And that is this, and, and especially with men, that is this. We get up in the morning, we're in a hurry to get out the door, we grab our coffee, we don't eat any breakfast, and then you know our first meal doesn't come till lunch. So then we're starving at lunch. Sometimes I would get like a salad and, and a piece of salmon to consider myself or, or uh, convince myself that I was eating healthy. And then I wouldn't have another meal till later in the evening. And by the time I got home, I was starving, man. I would hit, I would head straight for the pantry grab some chips or some crackers or whatever that would get the job done before dinner was ready. And then I would eat dinner, usually overeat. And then after dinner, I'd still be hungry because my body was like, man, you still haven't had enough calories. So then I would go and, and hit the ice cream or, or the sweets or whatever it may be for that evening. And so this became a vicious cycle for me. And I started gaining more and more weight. Of course, at this time, I wasn't doing a lot of uh, exercise. I was uh, two or three jogs a week for a mile trying to justify my poor eating habits. So with that being said, you know, there's a big craze with intermittent fasting right now and it can be very effective, but where a lot of men go wrong is they're like, well, I am intermittent fasting because I don't eat till 12.30 or one, dinner's at six and I eat my ice cream at eight and you're still within that eight hour window. You know, intermittent fasting technically is a 16 hour fast with an eight hour window of eating. There are some other versions of it, but that version is most common and so, I don't want you to, to, to fall into this, this pitfall that a lot of men do when you're talking about intermittent fasting because don't convince yourself that you're intermittent fasting when you could potentially, getting, uh, potentially be getting great results when you're not having any results from your current pattern. Um, I mentioned the salmon and the salad. There were days where I just was so hungry that I would go get fast food, eat a bunch of processed carbohydrates, and then the next thing I know, you know, I would, I would have that food, have that meal, and then later on, head straight for the pantry, like I said, grab those crackers, um, you know, that, that immediate gratification, because I was starving, and I wouldn't have anything in the mid-afternoon. I'd have coffee or energy drink or something to give me that little boost to get me through the rest of the day. And so that's a pattern that I see very, very common with men is, you know, they skip breakfast, they, they load up on coffee, get some through until lunch, have a crappy meal at lunch, and then they're starving when dinner time comes around. So these are the things that I want you to be able to avoid. So with that being said, you know, intermittent fasting still means that you have to fill your body with nutrient dense foods in order to, you know, get results, right? And so one thing that I uh, implement in my own life, I call it mo a modified version of intermittent fasting, but in the morning I have a little bit of protein powder and I have some coconut oil in my first cup of coffee that helps me fast until my first meal, which is around 10. So in saying that, I'm not truly fasting. I put some protein and some fat into my stomach, which then gives me the ability to fast until, you know, four, three and a half, four hours later. Um, I, when I say I follow modified intermittent fasting, it's my first meal is at 10 and my last meal then comes around eight. So my window's a, a little bit longer than the eight hour um, fast or the eight hour window that you're supposed to eat in. Um, but everybody's body is a little bit different. And so what I wanted, the point of this video is that I wanted you to realize that if you're trying to follow intermittent fasting, but you're eating, you're skipping breakfast and then you're eating a crappy lunch and then you go home, hit the pantry with a bunch of, which, uh, with a bunch of shitty carbs, crackers, whatever it may be. And then you gorge yourself for dinner and then have some ice cream afterwards you're not gonna lose weight, you're not gonna have success. And so when we talk about intermittent fasting, 
you can't lose sight of the importance of, of fueling your body with real nutrient dense foods. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. And so when I have my first meal of the day, it's always very high protein, very high healthy fat and very low carb. The longer you can delay that, that load of carbohydrates throughout your morning, uh, the longer you stay in your natural fat burning mode. As soon as you throw carbs at your body, then your body is going to use carbs as your f first source of fuel. And so with, with protein and fat, you're still avoiding the carbohydrates and so you stay in that natural fat burning mode a little bit longer. And that's what you want. You wanna delay that uh, carbohydrate load, which is then going to get, because your body's first, for, sir, first source of fuel is glycogen. Glycogen is carbohydrates or sugar broken down and, they, and, and your body uses that as its first source of fuel. Once you get beyond that, then you can get into fat burning mode. So you wanna delay the carbohydrate load as long as you can, and that's why I do four eggs with spinach, onion, a whole avocado, and some salsa to start the day. And then my first carbs don't come probably until about 1.30 or two, which is usually after my workout. I'll have a banana, and then I'll have, you know, um, my first meal, which is it, my carb source will either be like a sweet potato, some black rice, some quinoa, whatever we made for dinner the night before. So I hope that helps you. One of the worst ways you can start your day is with cereal or, you know, a, a big craze is the oatmeal. I'm not telling you that oatmeal is unhealthy. It's just not the best way to start your day. And so if you're going to have oatmeal, you also want to have a protein source with it. So if you're going to have oatmeal, have a, a, a hard boiled egg or have some almonds or something like that with it. But I would encourage you to get away from starting your day with nothing but carbohydrates. Again, oatmeal is healthy. It's just a better thing to eat later in the day, which doesn't sound that appealing. So um, I hope that helps. Again, the point of this was if you're trying to follow intermittent fasting, don't convince yourself that you're doing intermittent fasting when all you're doing is skipping breakfast, having a crappy meal for lunch, gorging yourself in the pantry before dinner because it's not ready and you're starving and then having a huge dinner followed up by ice cream. That's a pattern that I see a lot of. It's a pattern that I used to follow and that's what led me to becoming very overweight. Gentlemen, let's have an uncomfortable conversation. My name's Jason and I'm the founder of Dad Bod Health and I realize making healthy lifestyle changes isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. In fact, I have vivid memories from when I was significantly overweight and it was very overwhelming trying to wrap my head around everything that I needed to do in order to create the changes I needed to make to become the healthiest version of myself. I was at 232 pounds and I'm only five foot 10 and now I'm 172 pounds and in the best shape of my life. And what I did was I created a structure, a very simple structure to follow so that you can have an easy step-by-step -step process to get yourself into the best shape possible. When I created the Man Up community, I wanted these resources to be available to everyone, not just my private coaching clients, but everyone and anyone who wanted to become the best version of themselves and be around long-term for their wife, their kids, and eventually see their grandkids. So within the Man Up community, you're gonna have access to the Dad Bod Health app loaded with workouts everywhere from beginner to advanced home and gym workouts, an accountability group within the app of guys just cheering each other on while they're working out. You're gonna have a, um, access to a weekly newsletter just loaded with value, mindset content, uh, healthy recipes, dad jokes, up-to-date men's health, medical information. I am a registered nurse, so I care about you in that regard as well. But most importantly, you're gonna be part of an exclusive accountability group loaded with value. In the group, you're gonna have access to countless amounts of meal plans that I custom made. You're gonna have access to stress management tools, meditation guides, just a lot of things to help you work towards becoming the best version of yourself. And most importantly, the men within the group are very active, they're very engaged, they're posting their questions, they're posting their wins and their losses on a daily basis. And we're all in there to lift each other up, to help everybody become the best version of themselves. This isn't about eating an extra salad a week or going on an extra jog. This is about you taking full responsibility of your life, manning up, holding yourself accountable, and working towards becoming the best version of yourself. We all in that community want you to win. Everybody in there is in there with a common goal. And to be quite honest with you, they motivate me on a daily basis as well. So. If you're ready to join the Man Up community 
and become part of something much bigger than just your individual health goals. Become part of a community who truly wants you to become the best ver version of yourself. For the cost of less than one fast food meal or a couple of Starbucks a month, at $9.97 a month, you can become a member of the Man Up community. So if you're ready to man up, click the link below, and I can't wait to see you in the group.